Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music. Thanks for joining me on this video. This is a monster comparison between two powerhouse keyboards known as the Nord Stage 3 and the Nord Wave 2. I'll do my best to highlight in a way that I like to curate the information, and hopefully you'll get some benefit out of that. Uh, this is not unlike some of the other comparison videos I've done with the Nord Stage 3 and the Nord Electro 5. If you haven't already subscribed, you might want to do so. If you subscribe and then also click the bell icon, that means you'll be notified directly when a new video is released. And especially if you're right now hot to trot on looking at getting a Nord brand of keyboard into your life, or you already have a Nord keyboard and been sitting on the sidelines not really understanding how to work it fully, you've come to the right place. So feel free to come along for the ride. Also, feel free to post comments below. Uh, right now, the channel's small enough where I can answer comments, so I'm happy to do so uh, where, where possible. Let's dig in. First, a quick agenda before we get started. I want you to know that this video is based off a comparison chart that I created where we go through all the details section by section. And what I encourage you to do is go to My Keys to Music, click on the Buyer's Guide at the top, and download or at least look at the comparison chart if you want to follow along and you want the written version of this or essentially a way to compare visually a chart between the two keyboards. I put all the stage, all the electro, the wave two, everything is on there for the latest Nord keyboards and you can compare the features uh, one by one and refer to that at any time during this uh, comparison process. So first, we'll talk about the biggest similarities and the biggest differences. Hopefully, here in this section of the video, you'll be able to identify what key features you absolutely can't live without, and from that point forward, you've made your decision, and it's made your decision even easier because you've realized, oh, okay, I didn't realize that this keyboard didn't have that feature, so I've chosen the other one. We'll talk about the hardware differences and similarities. We'll talk about the system itself, all the different features, functions, the memory, things like that. And then we'll talk about the specifics of the synthesizer, the effects, and other additional notable features. That's the agenda. Let's dig in. So first, the biggest similarities. They're both from the same manufacturer. That's quite obvious. Klavia is a company in Sweden. These keyboards are handmade and shipped all over the world. They're played by amateur musicians, professional musicians. Uh, they're used heavily in the gospel slash religious sectors, churches and things like that because they imitate great organ, specifically the B3, as well as lush piano sounds for the most part if you're getting an electro or stage three. They are good at synthesizers as well. So in that sense, you can play synthesizer along with piano and then you have this tapestry of sound that can be very inspirational and it's used for those types of situations. You'll also see Nord keyboards in stages played by famous bands all over the world as well. Uh, when Nord first came out, they were particularly noted for having a lot of knobs and buttons on the top where you could make real-time changes without really any menu diving or not much to speak of, where a lot of the manufacturers at that time were also just eliminating buttons and putting everything under menus and digitizing everything. Uh, Nord took the complete opposite direction, or I should say Clavio took the complete opposite direction of that. Now a lot of the manufacturers today, a lot of them have knobs and buttons and easy access to the top uh, to get to the main things. But even the ones that do provide some access, there's still some menu diving that has to happen. On Nord, uh, hardly any by comparison. Uh, right, so then we have the fact that they are both full-featured synthesizers. They have everything you would expect out of a synthesizer, the ability to have, they have oscillators, the ability to produce waveforms. Now, neither of these keyboards are an analog synthesizer, so they're not traditional in that sense. Both of them are what's sometimes referred to as a rompler or a, an emulator of actual analog synthesizers. Uh, they model analog synthesizers and come really close in sounding just like them. Some will argue that they'll never be the same as an actual um, analog synthesizer, although to my ears, there's many a day where I can't tell the difference. So, but they are full featured. They both have an arpeggiator and things like that. So a lot of this basic things that you'd expect out of a synth, they both have that. Uh, they can both play samples, particularly the samples available at the Nord Keyboards website, which is nordkeyboards.com. If you go there and check out the piano, excuse me, the sample library 3.0, all of those samples can be downloaded at no additional charge, loaded on your keyboard, and played. 
So there's quite a library there. A lot of them sound very good and um, it gives you a lot of choices and functionality to be able to switch your sounds like that. In addition to being able to both play samples, they both have the option of making your own samples where you could record music to your computer, then assign it using the Nord sample editor software, and you can assign it to a key and then play your own samples back on the keyboard. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people who have emulated their old analog synths, recorded them on their computer, and play them back on the Nord Stage 3, and to their ears, they cannot tell the difference. It gets them so excited about being able to have their old keyboard with them, in a sense, or at least their favorite sounds of their old keyboard, right alongside. Uh, I've talked to people just this week who um, were able to completely eliminate two or three keyboards by sampling them into the Nord Stage 3, for example, and now they're just bringing the Nord Stage 3 to the gig as their solo keyboard and they are loving life in that respect. So very cool to be able to make your own samples. There's not a lot of keyboards today that make, they give you the ability to both uh, play samples and make your own. They both have a pitch stick, a modulation wheel, a full featured arpeggiator. They both can morph different aspects of the keyboard using different controllers. They both have aftertouch, which is, which is nice, as well as an effects section. So in that respect, they're very similar. Biggest differences. Well, the Stage 3 has a dedicated organ section, and we're going to talk a little bit closer about the comparisons on the organs uh, in great detail, so I won't go through that right now. But just keep in mind that the Stage 3 does have a dedicated organ section, and if you are absolutely passionate about organ, then already you need to be leaning towards the Stage 3. The Stage 3 also has a dedicated piano section. Again, if you're a piano enthusiast and piano is the primary sound you're looking for out of one of these keyboards, then you really ought to stick with the Stage 3. That's where the piano is going to sound its best. That's where there's a dedicated section for piano. And those are some of the biggest differences. And right there, you might just stop this video right now and decide, I've already made my decision. I have to get a Stage 3 because I need piano, organ, or both. The Stage 3 has a dedicated extern section. An extern section, uh, really, that's something proprietary to Nord, but what it allows you to do is it allows you to better control uh, an additional keyboard where you can, if you split your Nord Stage 3, that split can be transferred to the keyboard it's connected to. You can also, with a click of a button, turn on and off your ability to send MIDI to that keyboard. You also have the ability to change the volume of that keyboard, that secondary keyboard, right from the stage three, as well as send a control change number. And there's a few other notable features on the extern function. So if you're looking to, let's say, have a keyboard that is now the dominant keyboard in your rig, and you want to, to some degree, control a secondary keyboard, the extern section helps you with that. But I will warn you, it is by no means a full-blown controller keyboard, not even close. The Stage 3 has some controller keyboard aspects with this extern section, but it is by no means a substitute for a true blue controller keyboard in today's day and age. But it's something the Wave 2 does not have. The Stage 3 has more output options, which you'll see here in detail when we go through the output section of this video. Uh, the Wave 2, however, has four layers, whereas the Stage has two layers in the form of panel A and B. So in that respect, if you're talking strictly about the synth and strictly about the samples, you can play up to four with the Wave 2. You can only play two with the Stage 3. The Wave 2 has 61 keys, and that is the only configuration it's available in. The Stage 3 has three configurations of 73 keys, 76 keys, and 88 keys, and we're going to go through more detail on those specifics in a moment. All right. First, let's take a closer look here at the Wave 2. This is what it looks like. It has 61 keys. They are semi-weighted waterfall, so there's a little bit of weight to the key, but not an overreaching amount. I would not say it compares to that of an acoustic piano, where you think of an acoustic piano as being a fully weighted instrument. This is semi-weighted, so I think it's a cross between what you'd see in a synth, which has no weighted keys, versus a piano, which has fully weighted. This is semi-weighted. I personally like the feel of the Nord keyboard's semi-weighted keys. They're using a key bed from Fatar, F-A-T-A-R. It's a manufacturer that makes key beds, and Fatar makes key beds for a lot of keyboard manufacturers. So Nord is no stranger to being another company that uses a Fatar keyboard. And this 
I happen to like the, the feel of this keyboard. I don't know if it's because I've gotten used to it over the years, but to me, it's the perfect blend of weight because you can still play very quickly on it as well as it gives you a little resistance so that it's not just paper thin. The keys are also rounded. That gives them the, the idea or the name of waterfall. And that's really good if you're playing organ and you want to do, um, you want to push those keys up and down, slide up and down the keyboard without hurting your hand. Uh, the waterfall keyboard is particularly good at that. So if I were to pick, if, if I only had one configuration and I was making a Wave 2 today, I think the configuration I would have settled on would be either a 73 or a 61 key semi-weighted waterfall. The 61 keys, sometimes I do feel like I could use a few more keys, um, but I also think of the Nord Wave 2 as maybe not a good candidate to be your main and only keyboard. I see the Nord Wave 2 more of a secondary keyboard backing up something else that's more of a main keyboard. So from a configuration standpoint, that's what the Wave 2 has. Uh, it ranges from C to C, so there's five octaves there, and the keys are that way. Now, the Stage 3 Compact is its closest sister, if you will, or closest brother. It, uh, it has a 73 key, also semi-weighted waterfall key bed. So they do feel the same. I have a Nord Stage 3 Compact, and I have a Wave 2. They feel, I can't tell the difference. They feel the same to me as far as that goes. So it was birthed from those same Fatar keyboards, so I imagine that's why it feels the same way. The configuration on a Stage 3 Compact is E to E. So your starting note and your ending note is a little different. You do get one whole extra octave. And yes, it does make a difference to have an extra octave. It's not the end of the world to have 61 keys. You do have a octave up and down button and you can easily transfer and move the key, key bed virtually, if you will, to you'll be able to play the whole range of the keyboard, but just not at the same time. So the 73 key does make a difference, especially if you're playing uh, solos or if you're playing music that really has a wide range and you want to have low lows and really high highs that 73 does make a difference and this had this configuration of the stage three compact just a quick note it has the physical draw bars which you see there at the top left uh, where in the organ section and that's the only configuration that it comes with on those physical draw bars now if i were to superimpose a wave two on top of this stage three this is where it would sit you have the c to c ranging there there's your five octaves on top of your six octaves that gives you an idea of how those two keyboards stack on each other from a key bed standpoint. Now the Nord Stage 3 Hammer Action Portable. That's the next Stage 3 up in size. It has 76 keys, and they're configured differently. These are the Hammer Action Portable. The keys are not rounded like the Waterfall, and they have a lot more resistance. And let me just say that again. They have a lot more resistance, and that may be a good thing for some people and a bad thing for others. I think I've, I've really talked to a lot of people that find the Hammer Action Portable a heavy keyboard. They find it uh, louder. It definitely is louder. Um, to some, it's even a distraction. Others love the Hammer Action Portable and find it uh, a perfect weight because the, the, the idea of it being a little bit more portable yet still mostly weighted is a good thing, especially if you're a traditional piano player and you really do need that weight for whatever expression you're trying to emulate or you're looking to play more piano music, the Hammer Action Portable is going to be probably better suited than the Waterfall semi-weighted. But needless to say, that's how this comes. The keys range from E to G, and you get six octaves plus a little bit more, three notes to be specific. And it has the digital draw bars, which I personally prefer the digital draw bars better than the physical draw bars, but I'm not necessarily an organ traditional person. I'm more of a synth player. Um, and I wouldn't call myself a piano player either, but I do appreciate and love a good acoustic piano. But it comes with the dig digital draw bars. I really wish the Stage 3 Compact came with digital draw bars, but it doesn't. Now, if I were to superimpose a Wave 2 on top of the Hammer Action Portable, this is what it would look like there. Then if I were to superimpose a Stage 3 Compact on top of this, that's how it would be configured. So the three extra keys you get with the Hammer Action Portable are actually on the top end, being the F, the F sharp, and the G. Now, do those three keys really make a difference? Yes and no. Sometimes it is nice to, to be able to start, um, you know, all the, all the way to the low E and then be able to have that F there as well as the G. But 
it's it's not a deal breaker for me whether I had 73 or 76 keys. But again, this video is not really comparing the stage line of things. It's really comparing the stage versus the Wave 2. So I won't spend too much more time on comparing the two stages. Now we have the Stage 3 88 key Big Boy. Now this is an 88 key hammer action. This is a fully weighted keyboard and it's giant by comparison uh, to a Wave 2. It really is sizably larger or larger, definitely larger. The key configuration goes like a traditional piano, starting on a low A all the way to a high C. It's got seven plus octaves. It does have the digital draw bars. Here's a Wave 2 superimposed on a 88 key. You can see there's a big difference there between the number of keys and how much you get access to. There's the Stage 3 Compact. There's the Stage 3 HP sitting on top of that. But even the difference between an HP and the 88 key is notable. I mean, there's a lot more keys there. And, you know, great if you're playing traditional classical music and you just need the space. But chances are, if you are really looking to play piano in a classical format, you're not comparing the Stage 3 with the Wave 2. You're most likely comparing the Stage 3 with, let's say, a Nord Piano or Nord Grand or another keyboard altogether. All right, so keyboard dimensions. Here we go. This is going to be interesting for you when you see something here in just one second. Like we talked about, the Wave 2 of 61 keys, it is 8.75 kilograms in weight and about 20 pounds. It's about 1,000 millimeters wide. That's the widest point there, or roughly 39 inches, give or take. The depth is 295 millimeters. Uh, that is the depth, you know, from front to back or close to 12 inches, and then the height is 100 millimeters tall or close to 4 inches tall. All right, now let's look at this. This is the big surprise here. The Stage 3 Compact is roughly the same weight, just a little bit heavier. In fact, just, uh, what is it, just under 2 pounds heavier. It's roughly the same width, 40 inches versus 42 inches. It's roughly the same depth, 295 versus 302 millimeters, or 11.6 versus 12 inches. And it's roughly the same height, almost identical in height, 104 millimeters and 4 inches high. How are these keyboards so different in the number of keys, yet so close in size? Well, you can see clearly on the left-hand picture, the Wave 2 makes up for the length using the key to the left of that low C key, you have that metal area where you have the mod wheel and the pitch stick. And I'll say that the position of that mod wheel on the Wave 2 is actually quite ingenious because I find it's so much easier on the Wave 2 to use the wheel and the pitch stick than it is on the Nord Stage 3 Compact. When I'm playing the Stage 3, I actually have to move my left hand, for the most part, off all of the keys to manipulate those controls, which means I'm, if I'm playing key bass or if I'm playing something that requires me to hold something on the left side, I potentially am going to compromise that. On the Wave 2, not so much. I can play quite a bit of combinations on my left hand while still reaching the mod wheel and the pitch stick without incident. And in fact, some of those other buttons right there, which we'll talk about here in a second, are also available without me having to lose too much of letting go of the left hand on those keys. So very interesting uh, that these two keyboards are so close in size. Then we have the Stage 3 Hammer Action. This is, now we're talking about 12.5 kilograms, 27.5 uh, pounds. So we're now over 7 pounds heavier than the weight of the Wave 2. The length isn't much longer. It's 11, uh, 1,122 millimeters wide or 44 inches wide. So about five inches wider than the Wave 2. Then we have the depth of 347 millimeters or 13.6 inches. It's quite deep actually from front to back. It takes up quite a bit of room. And the height is 127 millimeters, five inches high. It's the tallest keyboard that we're comparing today, even taller than the almighty Nord Stage 3 88 key which we'll take a look at now. Now, the 88 key, what I notice about that is it's really long and it's quite heavy by comparison. In fact, it's double the weight of the Wave 2. That's a consideration when you bring these keyboards to a gig, for sure. It's 50.7 inches wide and 1,287 millimeters, so quite a bit longer. The depth 
is 13 inches. Note that the depth is less than the hammer action portable. Also, the height is 118 millimeters, 4.7 inches, also smaller than the hammer action portable, which is interesting. But those are your comparisons. And the pictures on the left, I've done my very best to put those to scale. If you look, the keys actually line up. So that should be a good indication of how big these are relative to each other. So just take a look at that and you can get an idea. Generally speaking, I think if people are comparing a Wave 2 with a Nord Stage, they're generally looking at a Nord Stage 3 Compact. Those are the closest in terms of price and the closest in terms of size. Okay, now let's take a look at the output and pedal options. The Wave 2 has the following output features. It has a USB port. Keep in mind that this port will transfer sounds and samples and configuration settings in OS updates. It'll also transfer MIDI in and out. It will not, and I repeat, it will not transfer audio in any way, shape, or form. The USB does not transfer audio. The sustain pedal, which is traditional on most of these keyboards, you'd expect that out of any modern keyboard to have a sustain pedal. It also has a traditional MIDI input and output, the traditional five pin MIDI DIN. It also has a monitor in where you can take uh, a portable device and take your music and push it through to this monitor in and be able to audition and hear that music along with you while you play. It has a control pedal, a left and right output, and headphones. Now let's take a look at the Stage 3 output options. It has everything that the Wave 2 has and the following additional features. It has a program up and down pedal option where you can get an optional Boss FS6 switch pedal, which will allow you to move up and down the programs, also known as patches, with your feet, which helps uh, during a performance. It also has this optional rotor pedal, which you can take a traditional sustain pedal, plug it into the rotor pedal, and control the speed of your Leslie rotating speaker. That's, again, for the organ section. This is a feature not available on the Wave 2. It also has an organ swell pedal. Again, because it has an organ section, you can ob obviously um, adjust the volume with a dedicated pedal into the swell option jack there. It has a sustain pedal, but it also has the optional triple pedal that you can purchase, giving you the um, options of emulating a real pedal situation or a real triple pedal situation like you get on a traditional piano. So that's an option that is not available on the Wave 2. Even though the Wave 2 has a thing called sustain pedal, you can't take a triple pedal and plug it into a Wave 2. There's no such thing as a piano engine. There's no such thing as pedal noise on a Wave 2. That's exclusive to the Stage 3 only. It also has two additional outputs, giving you a total of four outputs, which are mostly configurable. So you could put your synth coming out of channel 1 and 2, you could take your organ coming out of 3 and 4, or you could take your organ and put it just out of channel 4. There's different configuration options, giving you some more flexibility both on stage and in the studio. All right, now let's talk about the frame and the accessories. The frame looks a little bit like this. The Wave 2 has a side panel, which I believe is metal, and it has the nice Nord Wave 2 label there. The Stage 3 has a nice actual wood siding, so in my opinion, the Stage 3 is a little bit more elegant, a little bit more, dare I say, classy, whereas the Wave 2 is perhaps a little bit more modern looking and more synth-like in that respect, and I'm sure this is by design. You can see there, this is what they look like stacked on top of each other. That happens to be the Wave 2 61 key on top of a Nord Stage 3 Compact. And then the Stage 3 has the ability to include an optional music stand with this music stand holder here. You would apply the music stand on, on the back of the Nord Stage 3. Any of the models of the Stage 3 have this option. And it makes it very easy and convenient if you are reading sheet music, you can have a built-in stand affixed right to your keyboard. So a nice feature there. The Stage 3, if you get the Compact, also has the optional Half Moon switch, which is the ability to adjust the speaker speed between slow and fast and stop for the organ engine. Again, this is a feature only available on the Stage 3. So now we come to the system part of our comparison. We have something called programs or patches as they're better known in the world of keyboards. 
There's 400 locations that you can store your own programs. A lot of them come pre-filled in from the factory. I'd say probably 300 or so come filled in from the factory, giving you 100 empty for you to play with, but you can manipulate or change all 400 if you want, as far as making your own space for programs. There's five locations for what's called live programs. Live programs gives you the ability as a musician to make a quick adjustment on the fly and it will save it to whatever live program you are looking at. So let's just say I was at a gig and I loaded my favorite piano sound into live slot number one. I go to the gig and I want to adjust my EQ specifically for this particular gig because the hall is different and I need to adjust my EQ settings. You could save that program in your live area, adjust your EQ, and for the remainder of that evening, your live one would be your favorite piano, but adjusted for EQ. That way you don't have to mess with your original program sound somewhere in your program list, but it's specific to that gig. Even if I turn the keyboard off and on, my sound is saved and I don't have to push a store button. So that's the uniqueness of a live program. So they are both multi-timbral. The Wave 2 has four layers. The Stage 3 has two layers. So in that respect, the Wave 2 has an advantage if you're going to play strictly synth parts and sample parts and comparing it strictly on that one engine, then the Wave 2 does have an advantage over the Stage 3. Seamless transitions, and this is a big deal for a lot of people, and I'll demo that right now here, but the Wave 2 does not have the capability of a seamless transition, whereas the Stage 3 does. Again, if you recall back, the Stage 3 also has that up and down pedal. So as you're moving up and down the pedal, you have seamless transition just between the sounds, which for a lot of people, that is a big deal. The Wave 2 does not have that option, so if you are going to switch sounds, you'll want to make sure that you're not hearing anything at the moment, or it's going to be a very abrasive cutoff. Here's an example of a seamless transition. I'll start with the Royal Grand 3D piano sound, and I'll hold the sustain pedal into the next patch or the next program. I still hear the piano off in the distance as I'm moving into that next sound. Here's an example of a non-seamless transition. I'll hold the notes and use the sustain pedal. I'll switch to another sound and you'll hear the sound immediately stop. Switch a program. Even with the sustain pedal on, the sound immediately stops when you switch to the other program. That's a non-seamless transition. So even though the Wave 2 does not support seamless transitions between programs, it does support seamless transitions between layers. Let me give you an example. Here I have a flute sound, and I'll hold the sustain pedal as I turn off layer A and turn on layer B, introducing a, an acoustic guitar. You'll still hear the flute in the background, even though the flute layer has been turned off. The Wave 2 does not have a song mode or a set list of any kind. The Stage 3 does have a song mode where you have eight banks of 50 songs each, giving you a total of 400 additional song locations. Those songs really just point to an existing program, but it gives you a different way to organize your keyboard and a better way to prepare for gigs or a particular recording session or what have you. You can do that on the Stage 3. You cannot do that on the Wave 2. They both have MIDI over USB and the five pin DIN in and out. They both can split the keyboard, although the splits work a little differently. First, the Wave 2 has eight different areas or called split points that you can split. And you can split up to three times. So you can split once, giving you a left and right zone. That would be two zones. You can split twice, giving you a zone on the left, a zone in the middle and a zone on the right that would give you three zones or I can split another time giving you three splits for four zones. Same with the stage three except the stage three has ten different places where you could split the keyboard and you still get four zones. Now the way the splits work between the keyboards is a little bit different. The stage three you can assign a, an engine to any split and it doesn't matter whether it's left or right. The wave two requires that the splits go from left to right. So you have four layers on a wave two. So if you're gonna split your keyboard, 
the leftmost layers are going to be on the left side of the split and the rightmost layers are going to be on the right side of the split and it changes based on how many times you split. That's just a really subtle detail that really will only affect you uh, after you purchase the keyboard and you figure out how splits work. The way they work between the two are a little different, but they both end up getting the job done where you need it to be, in my opinion. Okay, and then they both have crossfade between the splits. So as you're transitioning between splits, you do get a large width, a small width, or no width on that, and it just makes for a much smoother transition between your splits when you have two opposing sounds in either split. Okay, now we come to the piano engine, and this is one of those big deals here. On the stage three, you get a full featured piano engine, and the piano sounds come from a completely different library. In fact, it comes from the piano library available at nordkeyboards.com. They are lush, they are amazing, they are purpose built to be the best possible sounding pianos that they are able to make. In addition to that, you get very cool effects like the soft release or the string resonance, the pedal noise, which I mentioned, if you get the triple pedal, you have the pedal noise. You have the optional layer detune, which gives you a slight detune between layer A and layer B or panel A and panel B between your keyboards. You have adjustable K KB touch or keyboard touch. And you have an immediate on the fly EQ where you can adjust the bright, the mid, or the soft, Dino 1 and 2, depending on how you have it configured. Not only is it imitating traditional pianos, but it's also imitating the electric pianos, like the Rhodes electric piano, the clavinets, and many others. Not only that, the polyphony in the piano engine is vast and wide. They all sound amazing. If you want to hear the best piano and if you're really emphasizing piano, the stage three is really where you have to really consider. Now, does the Wave 2 have piano sounds? It does not have a piano engine, but it does have a sampler player. So here you can see loaded, I have a Grand Piano YAC7 in stereo, and that is a pretty good piano. It's not as good as the piano from the piano engine in the stage three, but it's passable. If you are thinking you need more of a synthesizer and piano is something you might need once in a blue moon, this will get you by. But like I said, it's nothing like having a full-blown piano engine if that is going to be emphasized in what you're expecting out of this keyboard. That comes from the sample area of the Wave 2. The Wave 2 also has the ability to play some basic electric pianos as well, and those sound pretty decent, but not as good as the electric pianos on the Stage 3. I mean, there's just a big difference between them. So by now you might be thinking, well, let's hear the difference between these pianos so I can determine if I can live with the Wave 2 piano sounds. And I will do that here in a second, but I won't be demonstrating any of the piano sounds on the Nord Stage 3, simply because there are countless videos already available on YouTube for you to hear the piano sounds of the Nord Stage 3. So it doesn't make sense for me to repeat and replicate all of that. I also encourage you, if you want to hear the subtleties of what piano resonance sounds like, string resonance, I mean, and those types of subtleties, check out my piano sizes video, and you will hear firsthand what those subtleties sound like. It really does make a difference, but it's something that wouldn't be obvious, and it's not something that's regularly demonstrated on YouTube. Uh, as far as stage three goes. So here's a little taste, a very brief and minor taste of the pianos here on the Wave 2, just for a quick reference. Keep in mind that these samples come from a dedicated sample library. This is the 3.0 library available on nordkeyboards.com. These particular samples are playable on any Nord keyboard that can play samples. That would include the Electro family, the Stage family, the Wave 2. So what you're hearing here is not necessarily unique to the Wave 2. In addition, you can take advantage of any of the things you can do here in the synth engine, adjusting the attack and the frequency cutoff and other things like that available in the synth engine are all directly tied to the sample. In other words, you can take a basic sample and put it through the synth engine, creating a totally different sound. If you have pianos coming from a piano engine, like on the Stage 3, those cannot be driven through the synthesizer portion of the keyboard. It can only be driven through, let's say, the effects portion of the keyboard. So in that respect, these samples are more fundamental building blocks to something more if you want it. 
All right, so let's start with an acoustic piano too. I have no effects on here whatsoever. So it's definitely a piano, you can hear that. And if you add a little effects, let's say a hall, or rather a stage reverb. With sustain pedal. Might get you by in a gig. You might not even need a stereo piano at a gig. In fact, sometimes I prefer more of a raw piano sound at a gig when you're playing with other musicians because that tends to cut through a little better than, let's say, some lush, really um, effects-driven piano that sounds totally authentic and real as a solo instrument. But in the performance arena, when you have other musicians around you and you're actually trying to play a piano solo that cuts through that people can actually hear, uh, I tend to use more of like an upright effect or a raw piano sound with a little bit more frequency added into it which doesn't sound all that great on its own, but in a, in a band setting, it actually cuts through and you can hear it as a piano. So some, some tricks of the trade there. I'm sure a lot of you people have experienced that same phenomena. Here's Acoustic Piano 4. This one I particularly like, and I think it's passable for a pretty lush piano as far as a piano sample goes, it's the Grand Piano YAC7 in stereo, which sounds nice. I'll turn it with, play it without the reverb first. Then with the reverb. Now keep in mind that with any sound, you can enhance it with the effects, like I mentioned earlier, you can run this through the synth engine if you wanted to, which we'll do here in a second with some other sounds. But um, if I put on the Cathedral Reverb with a good amount and make it bright, you'll see that you can really get a nice effect even with this basic grand piano here in stereo. So, for some of you, this is going to be an acceptable piano substitution, and you won't need to worry about getting a stage three in that respect. And for others of you who really prioritize the piano and need the best possible pianos, you're going to need a piano engine for that, and you're going to want to look and stick with the stage three. All right, here's an upright. Boy, this one is really has no high frequency. I think even Grandma's upright would have more frequency than that on the high end. But it is an interesting effect. Here's a rain piano. Honky tonk. E, I, grand, CP80. Let's put some reverb on that. Okay, electric piano one, soft. Now if you throw some typical electric piano effects on here, let's say a tremolo and some reverb. You have a pretty decent sounding electric piano. Or you could throw a chorus on there. Definitely passable. Electric Piano 2, no effects. This one you can hear a little distortion built into the sample, which is indicative of a lot of electric piano 
effects that you want to get that authentic sound. E piano shallow, E piano three shallow, E piano four. Pretty similar. Here's a Wurlitzer. And again, throw some effects on there. Let's throw. Oh, let's throw a pan on there. Not that you would normally do that with a Wurlitzer, but. Um, Here's a clavinet, no effects. Now keep in mind, on the Wave 2, you don't get the wah effect, which a lot of you love to put in conjunction with some of these electric pianos. But you do have the pan, you do have the chorus, um, the vibe. Not that you would normally do a vibe with a clavinet necessarily, but if you added some reverb on there and throw some vibe on there, it'll... So you can really enhance all these uh, quite a bit. And like I said, you could probably pull off the basics that you need without actually needing a piano engine. That's really going to come down to you and what you need it for. These sounds are coming from the Nord sample library. And I think most of them are loaded on here, but there may be a few from the piano category that I'm not even auditioning here. Harpsichord. Here's a DX7 with those fine tines. Let's add some chorus and reverb. There's also a phaser built in, which isn't listed here in the labeling. Pretty decent there. This is a Piano 80. Let's put a chorus on that one with some reverb. a Korg M1 with the effects. Here's a toy piano with no effects. And that takes care of the piano samples that I happen to have loaded here on the Wave 2, just to give you a small taste. Um, let me show you what's happening in the Wave table, because the Wave table also has some additional keys category here. And I'll run through those very quickly. So there are 10 options here under the keys category for the wave table specifically. E-piano, DX1, full tines, acoustic piano, and three clavinets. Let's just listen to a few of those. I'll just run through them here. By themselves, the wave tables, in my opinion, are not that inspiring, and I don't think they're necessarily meant to be a completed product, rather a fundamental starting point for a sound, 
with the principles and properties of the given name that it's been given, EPN01 through 3, DX, full tines, and so forth. So if you were to take, let's just say, a DX1, which by itself, like I said, is not very inspirational, but if you add some effects to it, and you can run this through the full synth filter and also adjust the envelope, um, I think that's more of the spirit of what we're trying to go for with a DX1 principle then enhanced using the synth engine. So if I just add a little bit more attack, take the filter down, maybe add some resonance and some drive, change the filter a little bit. Change the EQ. Too much drive. Do a pan effect. Now you wouldn't even know at this point that you started with the DX1 wavetable as the beginning of this sound. Now you can take just about any sound that you start with and then throw some effects on it, throw it through the synth engine, and you will get something completely different than what you started with to be totally unrecognizable that it was even the starting point of, in this case, a DX1. But my point is that these wavetables are a great way to start with the fundamentals that you might be looking for in the spirit of a DX1 and then enhance it with the synth engine. So I think that's primarily what the wavetables are all about. Next, we come to the organ engine. The Stage 3, as I've mentioned several times in this video, has a dedicated organ engine, which means you get the nine drawbars. You get things like vibrato and chorus effects. You get the percussion capability, including the volume soft, the decay fast, the harmonic third. There's just a lot that goes with it, and not even pictured here is the imitation Leslie speaker, or the emulation of a Leslie speaker, including its ability to go slow and fast. That's what makes the organ sound great. It's all of these components mixed together to really bring home the idea that you're listening to a B3 or, in this case, a Vox or Farfisa or even a pipe organ. So again, I think that's why the Stage 3 is used in a lot of worship settings as well as blues and jazz and rock and all kinds of things. There's just a lot of versatility with the Stage 3 engine, the organ engine, and if that is a priority for you, then the Stage 3 is probably where you want to lean. But surprisingly, the Wave 2 does have some organ sounds as well. You have the ability to play organ samples. Now, you don't have the draw bars and you don't have the Leslie speaker, but you do have the basic organs, and it does sound like an organ. In addition, the Wave Table also has some organs here. You can see here this imitating a Jimmy Smith type organ sound from the Wave Table synth area on the Wave 2. So let's take a moment and preview some organ samples from the Nord Sample Library 3.0, keeping in mind that these are in fact available on the Nord Stage 3, just like they are here on the Wave 2. In fact, they're available on the Electro and even the Piano and the Grand. All of those keyboards can play samples from the Sample Library 3.0. So I'm not showing you anything new in that respect. Can the Nord Wave 2 be your primary keyboard and does it cover organ in a satisfactory way? knowing that I don't have a dedicated organ engine like I do on the Stage 3. So let's start with Cathedral Organ 2. Now, that's not a bad Cathedral Organ. I've actually used this in a couple of my videos showing how the organ along with the organ engine can really make the difference when it comes to this type of genre. But... Even on the Wave 2, I can introduce another layer and add some effects. Let me show you what I mean. Let me split the keyboard, and I'm going to introduce a bass part on the left hand, keeping the organ on the right. I'm going to add some EQ that I've predefined and some reverb that I've predefined. We'll add that layer here on the bass part. That bass part is just playing like a square wave with some enhancements and a little bit of LFO happening as well. And then I'll bring the octaves down a couple on the organ since I'm playing it so high in the register. And with this combination of things, you should be able to come up with a little excerpt.
Here's some quick examples of the organ samples built in. Here are the organ wavetables from the Nord Wave 2. We have second, third, Jimmy Smith, blues, gospel, church, squabble, full organ, full organ plus, and principal. Alright, next we come to the synth section. So the sample memory between the two is quite a bit different. The Wave 2 has a one gigabyte uh, memory stack. Now in the world of computers, and I'm a computer guy, I look at one gig and it's like, that's like the, where you even begin on storage. Everything starts at one gig, and to say that it has one gig is sort of, I don't know, in the computer world, kind of funny. Uh, it almost doesn't add up, doesn't even make sense that in 2020 something has only one gig. but in the world of the Nord keyboards and the way that the compression works and the way that you can store a lot of samples with that one gig, it really does uh, add up to being quite sizable. So there's a big difference there in terms of that. Then we have the sample synth polyphony. Again, this is a big difference here. The Wave 2 has 48 voices. That means you can play 48 keys at a time and hear all of them. The Stage 3 has 34 voices. Now, the Wave 2 is going to be separating those voices on layers. So you have four layers. So if you are using all four layers, each one of those layers could be taking up more and more voices. So 48 voices, you do need all 48 at times, uh, but it's nice to know you have them. And if you're only using one layer, then technically speaking, you have 48 voices. The Stage 3 has 34 voices split across two layers, or panel A and B. So... I think it all makes sense. At the end of the day, I think the Stage 3 with two layers at 34 voices is pretty similar to the Wave 2 at four layers. Technically speaking, if you're adding this up and looking at it from a mathematical standpoint, the Wave 2 would be at a slight disadvantage if all four layers were being used. Yet if you were using only one layer, the Wave 2 has a clear advantage at 48 voices.
Now we just got done talking about the sample synth section and compared the memory and the polyphony. The dedicated piano section, available only on the Nord Stage 3, actually comes with 2 gigs of memory for the piano sounds and 120 voices for the pianos. Now we have the volume controls on a single screen. Big advantage with the Wave 2 is the idea that you can adjust all volume levels, all with those sliders, very visible, very easy to get to. With the Stage 3, you have to go to panel A and B and keep flipping back and forth and adjusting the synth engine volume separately. So it's a little extra work there, but I think that's a notable difference that some people would want to consider. The Wave 2 has a nifty pan left and right. You can take one layer and pan it one way or the other, and it's incremental. It doesn't have to be all the way left or all the way right. Now, there is some basic panning built into the Stage 3. It does require a dedicated effect. You can only do one engine at a time, and it's not nearly as visual as what you see here in the Wave 2. You can morph with the wheel, the modulation wheel, except that the Wave 2 does have the added feature of having an optional quick morph, if you will, where you can assign it quickly to the filter, the oscillator control, or the LFO amount. They both have the ability to morph using a control pedal. They both have the ability to morph using aftertouch. However, with the Wave 2, you have the added benefit of being able to morph with velocity, which is how hard or how fast you push a key. It's more about how hard you push a key. And then you can morph with Impulse on the Wave 2, which you can't do on the Stage 3. And that is a nifty way to manipulate the keyboard. I tell you that is uh, a big advantage there. That Impulse Morph is something that I'm personally very excited about. Then we have the arpeggiator section. Now both keyboards have a full-featured arpeggiator. In that respect, they are identical. But that's really where the identity of being similar stops. Because the arpeggiator polyphonic mode is available on the Wave 2, not on the Stage 3. There's a gate mode available on the Wave 2, not on the Stage 3. There's a zigzag option on the Wave 2, which is two notes up and one note down. That's a sort of a different pattern effect there. And then you have the pre-built custom patterns available on the Wave 2, where you don't have any of that on the Stage 3. They can both sync with the master clock. Let's go take a look at the arpeggiator and some of the differences between the two. I'm going to start with a simple triangle sound here on my Nord Wave 2. And when we think about arpeggiators, we think about playing one note at a time in a pattern. So if I were to hold all these notes, I'd want to hear those arpeggiated up and down. So if I simply turn on the arpeggiator doing nothing else fancy, it would sound just like that. In this case, it's down to up. Then you can change the direction of that to down, like this. And then you can do up and down, which would be like this. And then you can randomize it. So both keyboards can do that. Then you can extend the range so that even though I'm playing these four notes down here, the range can go much higher into the octaves. Like that. Now where the two keyboards are different is the arpeggiator range on a Wave 2 can be incremental. I can go from a single octave to 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, .2, and you can't do that on a Stage 3. The Stage 3 simply goes from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, and those are the increments. So a small, subtle detail. Another difference between the two keyboards is that the Wave 2 has this notion of a zigzag type pattern. All right, let's listen to the zigzag. It's essentially two notes up, one note back, two notes up, one note back, but then it repeats one of the notes in the middle there. So it's just a unique pattern that isn't available on the Stage 3. Then where the big differences are here is the fact that the Wave 2 has this idea of a poly mode. 
And poly mode is still taking those same notes that you play on the keyboard, but instead of playing them each on their own, in a sequence, it's playing all of them together. So if I were to hold the C triad here, it would play it like this. And if I were to extend the octaves, it would change the voicing like this. So let's listen to that in poly mode, which is the single octave. So that's an example of something not available on the stage three. Then I'll extend the octaves. And you can still change the different directions here. So it's a different way of thinking about arpeggiation, and they call that poly. Then you have this idea of a gate. So the gate is simply volume on, volume off, volume on, volume off, based on the notes you play. Now in this case, it's going to take me very literally, it's only going to play the notes that I play. The difference here is that I can keep it a tight gate, like that, or a loose gate. Tight, loose. So that's something, again, not available on the stage three. Now, the big thing here is the pattern, the fact that you can do a custom pattern. And right here, you have 28 preset patterns, and then you can make your own pattern and store that within each layer. So every layer can have a different pattern, giving you a wide variety of choices here on the Wave 2. And these patterns don't have to be regular. They can be random, and they don't have to be in normal 4-4 time. You can have any number of steps up to 16 but you can add an oddball set of steps, like 13 steps, and that will give you some interesting and odd time signatures happening there, at least from a pattern standpoint. So I've got a practical example of where patterns might really shine. So here's a song called A Little Respect from the group Erasure, and I've got three layers programmed here. I've got a bass layer, sort of a snare drum thing, and then the actual piano part. So for this song, the bass goes dun da da dun da da dun da da dun so that really does require a pattern in order to get that distinct pattern. So see, dump, da da dump, da da dump, da da dump, just repeats over and over again. I just have a four step pattern there. That's for the bass. And then for the snare drum, I have it just on the two and the four, ch, 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 like that. And then for layer D, I have the piano part, which is dun da dun da dun dun da dun da dun dun da dun da dun. So if you put all that together, you get an interesting effect. So big differences on the arpeggiator. Okay, now we come to the oscillator section, the chromosomes of these keyboards. Both have traditional analog waveform emulations. That would be the sine, the triangle, the sawtooth, square, and pulse waveforms. They both have the extended analog waveforms, which include the shape, sine, multi, and bell waveforms on the wave two, and a series of folding and clipped waveforms on the stage three, at the end of the day, they are both similar in the way they can manipulate waveforms. There are some differences, but there are more similarities than differences in the way that they handle these analog traditional waveforms. They both have the optional pulse waveforms. On the wave two, variable and fixed width options. On the stage three, you have a series of pulses with fixed harmonic spectra. They both have the super saw waveforms. The Wave 2 has a big advantage where you can detune the Super Saw at any increment from 0 to 100. The Stage 3 has a fixed increment, although it's not listed as such, at 33% and 66% as far as that goes. So essentially with the Stage 3, you get Super Saw 1 and Super Saw 2, whereas the Wave 2, it's just called Super Saw, but you can use a knob to vary the detune on that 
from zero to 100. So a lot more flexibility in the super saw with the Wave 2. Interesting to note that the Wave 2 does not have the format type waveforms. Those are the ones that sort of emulate the human voice a bit. The Stage 3 does have those format waveforms, although I can honestly say, say for me personally, I didn't really use those much or take advantage of that feature, but it is something to note that the Stage 3 has and the Wave 2 does not. They both have a frequency modulation section, or FM for short. The Wave 2 has a, quite a bit more capability there with nine different modes, and the Stage 3 has one mode of FM. I won't be going into all the FM nuances. That is an area of expertise that I don't particularly uh, have a fondness for or expertise in, but I know there are many experts out there that where FM is the most important thing in a synthesizer, so let me just say that the Wave 2 has more capability than the Stage 3 in that regard. They both can generate noise. The Wave 2 has more options where you have a white noise, a pink noise, and a red noise. Those are three different noise options, and the Stage 3 has a white 1 and 2. Let's go hear some of these waveform differences firsthand. So on the Wave 2, with the Super Saw, you get to choose the amount of detune from 0 to 100. On the Stage 3, you get two Super Saw settings, a Super Saw 1 and a Super Saw 2, which to the best of my ears ends up being a 30% detune for Super Saw 1 on the Stage 3, sounding like this, and a 60% detune sounding like this. And that would represent Super Saw 2. Okay, now we come to the filter section of the comparison. Well, interestingly enough, they both have identical filter types. That would be the LP-12, the LP-24, the LPM, which is the Moog type emulation filter. Then they have a high pass, a band pass, and a low pass and high pass combo. Those are identical in that respect. They both offer the same features there. They both have a filter drive option with three amounts. They both have a filter envelope. The Wave 2 has an advantage where you have a dedicated knob for attack decay, sustain, and release with the ability to inverse that envelope and each one of those attributes is morphable. Yes, morphable, and that can really make a huge difference there. The Stage 3 uses a mod envelope that includes a dedicated knob for attack, then one knob that is a combo between decay and sustain, and then a third knob for release. This doesn't give you as many advantages as the Wave 2 with four dedicated knobs, but it does, for the most part, get the job done. You'll see dozens of videos where I've created on the Stage 3 using the envelope, and to the untrained ear, it may not be much of a difference. Then we have the filter velocity control. They both have the capability of adjusting the filter envelope by way of velocity or having influence over that. Then what I really like about the Wave 2 is it has a separate on-off switch for the actual filter, which the Stage 3 does not. The Stage 3 filter is on all the time. It doesn't necessarily mean it's having effect all the time, but it's always continuously on. And I like the ability to set the filter, turn it off if I want, or turn it on. That on-off button, by the way, is actually morphable with the impulse morph, which is something you can't even begin to do on the Stage 3. So that is an interesting option there that might go unnoticed at first blush. All right, then we come to the modulation portion of the synthesizer. They both have a single LFO with five waveform patterns and the ability to sync with a master clock. They both have options. The Wave 2 has options to affect the filter, the oscillator control, and pitch. So you can actually take your LFO and adjust the pitch and modulate that over time. The Stage 3, you cannot use pitch for that, but you do have the filter and the oscillator control. They both have an amp envelope. Just like we learned in the modulation envelope, the Wave 2 has a dedicated knob for attack, decay, sustain, and release with a feature called transient attack, which we'll talk about here in a second, and each one of those is morphable as well. The Stage 3 has a traditional amp envelope with a dedicated knob for attack, one knob that's a combo decay and sustain, and a third knob for release. They both have velocity control over that amplifier, and they both have the ability to have a mod envelope 
The Wave 2 uses an attack decay or an attack release option, and it does have the added pitch option, which the Stage 3 does not. The Stage 3 has a modulation envelope that is an attack, a decay, sustain, knob combo, and a release. They both have modulation velocity control as well. Now we come to the effects section of the comparison. Now, for effect section 1, I will be talking about the fact that they both have a pan capability, ring modulation, tremolo. The differences are the Wave 2 has an ensemble, which the Stage 3 does not. The Stage 3, on the other hand, has a wah-1, a wah-2, and a wah-wah combo, which the Wave 2 does not. The Stage 3 wah effect is particularly good for electric pianos. The electric pianos are an emphasized feature of the Nord Stage 3 with that dedicated piano engine, so it would make sense that they include the wah effect to go along with that. Now, the Wave 2 does not have an effect section 2, but I put it in this column so that I could compare apples to apples as much as possible. The Wave 2 does have a chorus effect, a phase effect, and a vibe effect. Please note that if you're looking online at pictures of the effects section of the Wave 2, you won't actually see the word phase. It's an OS update that they added. Phase is actually when two of these lights are illuminated here. That becomes the phase. So it's not labeled as such, but it is an included effect. The Stage 3 has Chorus 1 and Chorus 2, so you get two choices for Chorus. It does have a flange, which I deeply miss on the Wave 2. And it has Phase 1 and Phase 2, so two different phase effects and a vibe effect as well. So fairly similar. I think for the most part, the effects are covered pretty good by both keyboards. You're not really feeling like you're missing too much. Although, like I said, I do miss that flange often. And I do sometimes miss the wah-wah as well on the Wave 2. Then the delay. Well, here we have a big advantage with the delay on the Wave 2. Or I should say a slight advantage, not necessarily a big advantage. Both delays have an amount dry and wet setting knob. They both can filter the tail of the delay through an HP, LP, and BP filter. That would be a high pass, low pass, and band pass filter. They both have a feedback optional setting. The Wave 2 has an added feature where you can have chorus, vibe, and ensemble in your tail of your delay, which is a nice feature. They both feature ping pong, analog mode, a tap tempo, the Wave 2 has a slight advantage where there's a deep option as well on that digital delay. So as far as delays go, I think the Wave 2 has it beat. In fact, this is the most advanced delay that I've seen on any Nord keyboard. EQ, I think the Stage 3 has a slightly better EQ configuration. The Wave 2 has a option where you can either have a two-band EQ, one for treble and one for bass. Pretty easy to understand that. Or you can combine those two knobs for a one-band EQ, but a parametric EQ where you can emphasize or de-emphasize a particular range of frequencies on a scale. You could consider it sweepable. So those are the options on the Wave 2. The Stage 3 has a three-band EQ, a treble, a bass, and a sweepable mid-range where you can dictate the frequency range of that mid, and the mid can either emphasize or de-emphasize that range. The Stage 3 has the advantage of having an LP24 and an HP24 filter. That would be the low-pass and high-pass filter as well within that EQ. As far as amp and speaker simulation go, the Wave 2 has a variable drive option, just like the Stage 3 has a drive option. The Stage 3 has an added benefit where you can imitate speakers of the JC, the Twin, or the Small. So there's a slight advantage over that as well on the Stage 3. The Stage 3 has a compressor, the Wave 2 does not. Reverb, similar. They have a lot of similarities here. The Wave 2 has five different reverb sizes, normal and bright options, as well as a dark option. So in a sense, you could take 5 times 3, because you could have a particular size like Hall as a normal, bright, or dark. So that's three options for each size. That'd be like 15 different combinations. You also do get an optional corral mode. The Stage 3 has six options, but it has only the normal and bright option with that. So technically speaking, six times two would be 12 different options there for the reverb on the Stage 3. I do want to note that the Wave 2 
It does have those five sizes, but one that is particularly of note is the cathedral size, which is a very long reverb and actually provides some really cool effects and soundscapes there. So I wanted to mention a couple other miscellaneous things that didn't really fit in any of the charts and graphs per se. The first thing is the idea of a sustain pedal. On a Nord Stage 3, you can determine whether you want the sustain pedal to be on or off by engine and by panel. That means on panel A, I could have a synth with a sustain pedal, and on panel B, I could have my synth without a sustain pedal, so that when I push the sustain pedal, only panel A will have sustain. You can't do anything like that on a Wave 2. Once I plug in a sustain pedal on a Nord Wave 2, the sustain pedal actually makes all four panels, or all four layers in this case, work at the same time. I can't have sustain pedal independence by layer, and for some of you, that might be kind of a big deal. Now you can have the hold independent by layer, so that's very flexible and, and to be expected, but you cannot do that with the sustain pedal. The second thing I want to mention is this idea of grouping. The Nord Wave 2 has the ability to group, which gives it an advantage as far as editing goes over the stage 3. For example, let's just say I wanted three of my layers to all be in a group so that when I adjust my reverb and my EQ, all three layers are happening at the same time or being affected at the same time. On a stage three, I have to independently go to panel A, adjust my effects, go to panel B, adjust my effects, go to panel A, adjust my reverb, go to panel B, adjust my reverb. So there's no connection there. There's no grouping capability. So that does give the Nord Wave 2 a big advantage, not so much from a sonic point of view, but from an editing and speed of use and performance point of view, that group feature does come in very handy. Another small but definitely notable feature here is that the Wave 2 gives you a visual representation of your entire amp envelope all at one time, showing the attack, decay, sustain, and release levels, as well as a pictorial representation of that. Okay, to recap this whole thing, you've seen the differences between the Nord Stage 3 and the Nord Wave 2. Those two keyboards have a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences. Where they are most different is the size configurations and availability. I think when the Stage 3 was created, it's created more of an all-around keyboard that's good for piano players, organ players, or even synth players. So in a lot of cases, the Stage 3 could be the only keyboard you need to bring to a gig. The Wave 2, on the other hand, I think has more capability overall to create sounds that you've never heard before because it has the four layers, gives you a lot more combination, a lot more layering capability, a lot more flexibility in what it can produce in terms of overall sound. Uh, for instance, if you're in a cover band imitating a particularly difficult synth sound, the Wave 2 might have a better time of it because you do get the two extra layers. The Wave 2 also has those optional impulse morph and velocity morph. I think the Wave 2 speaks to more of a traditional synth player, whereas I think the Stage 3 speaks a little bit more to a traditional keyboardist in terms of someone performing and who needs an overall full-featured keyboard for any occasion. Okay, with that said, there's some price differences, obviously, between the two. The Wave 2 is considerably more, less expensive than the Stage 3, but that sort of goes without saying. The Stage 3 has a lot of different options, uh, in many ways, a lot more options than the Wave 2. I think it comes down to a few things. Is If this is your second keyboard, then perhaps the Wave 2 is a better candidate, especially if your first keyboard has the piano and organ largely covered, and if you have a keyboard controller already, the, the Wave 2 would be a nice add-on to your rig. If this is your first keyboard, it's a little bit more difficult to determine which one is right for you. I think you could buy the Wave 2 as your first and only keyboard, provided you are not going to live and die by having piano or not having piano, or organ and not having all the full features of organ. If you're not going to miss that at all, one iota, then the Wave 2 is probably a better choice. It's a little less money, and it's feature-rich in terms of synth performance. If, however, you might need a piano and you might need a good organ and you want to have the best emulation of those two type instruments without a doubt, then the Stage 3 really is your only option. The Wave 2 can somewhat imitate organ and piano as you've seen in this video, but it may not be good enough for what you have come to expect or what people have come to expect when they hear someone play the piano or the organ. So, now that you know a lot more about the Wave 2 and the Stage 3, hopefully you'll be able to use this information to help you better determine which one you are looking to potentially purchase and invest in. 
If you are looking to compare the Stage 3 with a Nord Electro 5 or a Nord Electro 6, please see my other videos and series for that. If you want to learn more about what these keyboards sound like, in particular the Stage 3 and its ability to emulate famous music, you can check out my Discovery series where I have several videos now emulating songs of old, famous songs, and so forth. And for the most part, we get very close on some of those imitations. Uh, so if you're in a cover band or something like that and you have a Stage 3, those videos will come in particularly handy. I haven't done many of those for the Wave 2 yet, but I would imagine the time will come where I have the Wave 2 being highlighted on a Discovery video as well. So if you like this content, feel free to subscribe. If this video uh, provided value, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it to your community so others can benefit from it as well. Thanks for joining me. My name is Mark. This is My Keys to Music, and we'll catch you on the next one.